Yeah, um, obviously excited to get out of here with a W. Um, you know, we credit to Indiana, hard fought game. I, I showed the guys last night, really, since they had their bye week. Um, uh, they made some changes on the coaching staff and, and really, uh, I think their first game was against Michigan and, and uh, they were up early on them. Uh, then uh, came back and had a Penn State game and made it a four quarter game. And then obviously the win over uh, Wisconsin last week. So I, I thought coming in, we knew we were gonna have a test on our hands and our guys kept being perseverance or, you know, battling back. Um, I give a lot of credit to uh, you know the guys that made plays in the end. What needed to happen, obviously defense, tail of two halves, uh, and then kind of at the end fell apart. But um, you know we lost some key personnel, and the guys stepped up to the challenge, made their biggest stop defensively in overtime there to force that uh, third down stop, and then uh, you know kick the field goal. And then I, I tell you, John uh, Paddock, uh, I'm blown away that he obviously uh, uh, most yards in Memorial history for an Illinois quarterback. Just a great indicator. And I've always said this, right? Like. Long before today, the greatest quarterbacks I've been around are the guys that can make many plays or make plays of nothing, right? And uh, that last play, it kind of broke down. They brought some pressure. He flushed out to his right. Isaiah adjusted and went cross country on that route over there into the boundary. And they could see him convert it and make it be the game when he touched down. It was just awesome. So a lot of really good things. Casey Washington uh, got his first touchdown today. I can't believe that. This kid has absolutely been lights out. He's kind of been the uh, Unwritten MVP, in my opinion, uh, all year offensively, he's just made big play after big play. Zy Chrysler came back after rolling up his ankle. Uh, Caden Fagan went back in after uh, getting banged up. Um, don't know exactly where he is, so you know a lot of guys persevered and came through. It's the end of the year in the Big Ten, and we'll see where we go. So with that, I'll open up questions. Is this your first 500-yard passer? I don't know that. Got to be. Right? Yeah, I don't know that. What? What? This is like a legendary performance, obviously. After yeah. what he did last week, Brett, like how do you put into context what he's done? What, how special is what he did? You know, he's so, uh, 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 since January, he's the same guy every day, right? It's hard to say that, but he, he just, you know, um, very diligent in his process. Uh, he's a guy that works and, and he plays with a lot of emotion. You know, before the game, he was uh, in the locker room, got guys fired up on the sidelines. Even last week at practice, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you'll hear him say things that, you know, practice just kind of, had a little more zip to it. Um, I think the players really respond to him. He'll do some things you're like gonna, you know, hit your head upside the wall, uh, uh, but he is absolutely dynamic. Um, you know, uh, knows his strengths, maximizes his weaknesses, um, or, or minimizes his weaknesses. Just really impressive, and the, and the kids really respond to him. Obviously, a update for Kaz with the uh, judgment. Yeah, what's your messaging with that? With Taz? Yeah. Yeah, um, it'll be some extreme messaging. Um, obviously, the, the whole game was chippy. This goes back to last year, right? Um, you know, we had a 100 degree locker room um, last year and it really just pissed a lot of people off. And so we kind of played off that this this year, to be quite honest. There's a lot of, in my opinion, a lot of, a lot of rinky-dink stuff going on the bottom piles. We had a guy get an ankle rolled up and uh, they punched uh, 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 our, our holder on field goal. Uh, Taz, I don't condone. Obviously, if you spit on the guy, we're going to have a conversation about that. Taz swears up and down. I was really, I thought the officials uh, could have got better control of what was going on. Um, there was an early substitution issue that I know is going to be a problem, and, and they'll call back and say, oh, yeah, we, we should have done this differently. But, um, you know, I think as coaches, we have to stand up for our players, right? And, and on the flip side, our players can't do dumb things, right? There's some chippiness there that you just got to walk away. They were really, him and one were into it. I don't think there was a DPI called on our sideline. Every one of them was on that far sideline. And, and, you know, one's a big golf ball receiver, and but he puts his hands on us. We have a right to defend that. So, yeah, I, you know, it's turned into a nice little uh, rivalry game uh, with Indiana, who would have thought. Did you feel like offensively, Brett, that it was kind of the pass kind of set up the run late in the game with Reggie, and you guys were able to get some things going that way? Uh, you know, I think the one thing Barry did today is really adjusted as the game adjusted, right? Like Caden, once he was out, we used him early, right? And he, he definitely looked good running that. And then when Reggie came in, we had to uh, have a, a, a perspective. He, he wasn't going to be able to just sit in there and right. uh, bang it out. So uh, yeah, I thought the end of half play, the end of half series, uh, um, he, Barry just did a nice job of adjusting the call. He really took control today, in my perspective, of when he had to huddle. And I could see it during the course of the week. I said something to him Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, just at, at different, at, uh, I thought a demeanor with him on Tuesday and Wednesday at practice with, with, with John was pretty evident, and I think our players could feel that as well. Right, you had 19 chunk plays in the passing game out of 24 completions. I mean, just what, what went into maybe receivers getting open, John finding them in the right place, just made to have that kind of production? Yeah, we thought we had, you know, we thought this game, you know, so on Monday uh, we come together and I go around the room and I ask our coaches what they think, right? So I start with the coordinators and then I'll just, each coach will kind of talk about their matchups. I'm a big matchup guy, right? So Bart will talk about matching up up front. Uh, uh, 
just will talk about on the edges with the tight ends and the edge players and and Gio thought that going into that game that was a matchup we should win in the back end. He felt really good about where our guys were versus where he saw their uh, DBs, and I think that he preached to them all week about that. Um, uh, I thought it was interesting. Gio, I, I love it when coaches you know have a feel for their players better than anybody can understand. And, and when Isaiah had issue with a punt on that first one, he just said, "Just just stay the course. He's going to be just fine." And then the next play, he's streaking in the end zone. You know, just I think Gio did a nice job of getting them in matchups. Barry made a nice job of. Play concept, designing it, and obviously the players executed. Ben, we talked about Casey earlier, but what's he meant to you guys, especially this time? Yeah, Casey is, uh, you know, one of those things, you know, um, especially our journey, right? Like I got here, and I remember talking to him two or three nights in a row, trying to talk him into staying. Uh, he kind of thought we were just going to be a, a cloud of dust and, and, and run everything right, and, and uh, then he came back with the right reasons, and I kind of made him earn it, right? And uh, then he gets eligible, and then he makes that first big catch for us at Penn State, right? So. Um, I thought last Jan or last spring and spring ball, I literally was like, man, Casey's really having a nice spring. He's really doing something special. He's going to have a special senior year. And then early on in fall camp, he got a concussion, you know, and was out for about two weeks. Uh, and so everybody kind of, you know, when's Casey going to come back? And then that first game, the way he played, right? And then the, the two uh, plays in the Maryland game. I, and I thought my moment with him, um, as a head coach, you always remember these little moments. Um, after the Maryland game, I, I was in the staff meeting on Sunday, and I said, "Who was?" I was coaching my back to the bench. And I said, "Who was? Who was good on the sidelines?" And two defensive coaches said, "Coach Casey Washington was unbelievable in that game on our sideline." And I think that's who Casey is. Uh, Casey uh, just met with about ten scouts this week, and one of the things I say to all those guys is like, "Keep your eye on this guy. Like he's going to be the ideal uh, receiver in that league that can probably play all three, be valuable on special teams." He called me last Tuesday night of Minnesota week. Uh, when I talked about number 27 for them, how, how much he impacts the game in special teams and on defense. And he said, Coach, I want to do that for us. And he has to be on special teams. So we put him on special teams this week. And that's that's just how that guy kind of works. Coach, was this one of the better performances up up front on offense? Seems like the old line had a pretty good day. Today. We've just been getting healthier, right? Uh, it's it, it, To be quite honest, it, it really, uh, you know, this this starting old line that you see now isn't what we thought at the beginning of the year. We moved, obviously, Isaiah to tackle. Geske, who we thought might be playing right guard, he's playing left guard. Zai, who we thought was playing right tackle, is playing right guard. Um, so, you know, the, the, the place that I, I've really get excited about is our, I, I think the coaching, uh, the development, uh, the perseverance, um, and then the execution was really, really uh, a big part of what we're seeing here the last three or four games. But obviously Luke has played really well. Yeah. And then you have John do what he you does. You want a quarterback on first? No, I'm just saying, it seems like a good problem to have. How do you yeah. approach it? Yeah, forward? it's a great question. Um, I, I literally, during the course of this week, well, first off, Luke, full transparency, we thought he was going to get cleared, right? But it just, uh, on Tuesday or Wednesday, he was mathematically eliminated from being in the game. Um, and uh, But he now has passed that test, so he'll probably be involved from, from Tuesday forward. But uh, I, I obviously, we'll discuss this staff, but John's done a lot of really good things and putting himself in this position. And uh, the good news is he got two quarterbacks. And I, to be quite honest, Donovan Leary, in the last month, has been as good as he ever has been in our program. So um, kind of excited about a guy we've got recruited to. So uh, there's a lot of fun things coming. I think it's... Exciting for me right now to be the head coach here, knowing knowing what we have, but more importantly, what's to come. Right. Have you seen things out of Ashton Collins these last couple weeks? Maybe since yeah. the bye week that allowed him to step right in for Pat and make plays. You know, so Ashton this year is really, um, you know, you guys know his story, right? Like his background, his history, uh, two parents that uh, are hearing disabled, right? Like just his whole journey. Uh, last night, I he 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 uh, asked me if he could give the prayer for dinner and. Um, he got up and he spoke in front of the team, just like his volume, his context. I always say volume reflects confidence. And to see this kid grow the way he has this year and then today to get in those moments. So he made a huge play on the sideline and then we didn't want to go to review there. So we ran a quick play, right? And he took that play and turned it into five, six yards, right? Just just really, again, him and Gio, he, he's in that office all the time. Um, he's always a number one's hip, like he's like a little shadow with Isaiah. So uh, completely different size and stature, but it's kind of fun to see those guys grow. Macrosetic, you know, put himself yeah. in that role. Yeah, he's screaming for an NIL hairdo, right? Uh, 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 Macrosetic, uh, he just, he's probably one of my favorite kids. Like, I'm always giving this guy a little grief. He's kind of up near my neck of the woods, right? Um, uh, he, there'll be practices where he'll have like four or five picks in a, in a practice, right? Like, he's just got an incredible knack for the ball. I knew uh, Aaron really wanted to get him involved in the game this week. And then that play was really kind of what we see every day at practice. He just reads, reacts, and breaks. Um, you know, for him to be in high school football last year, I think he had a, a half ba baseball scholarship to 
Soft Valley Community College, right? He wasn't even going to go play college football until we offered him. So uh, I'm glad he listened. I'm glad he came. Three wins in four games, Brad. Was your, was your team shown? Yeah, anytime you can piece ones together, we just haven't been able to do that since, you know, going back to, I guess, uh, uh, the, the, the three game run against Wisconsin, Iowa, Minnesota, and then we've had a bye week and got Nebraska, and then we haven't been able to do a back to back win since then. So um, to win in the Big Ten, you know, and this wasn't a West opponent, but to win and uh, keep our drive alive for what we can do, there's still things out there that aren't mathematically uh, eliminated. I gave these guys a schedule two weeks ago um, to check off every day and take advantage of it and see where we get on Saturdays. And, this is two back-to-back -back Saturdays to see where they go. Um, uh, I think Iowa plays Rutgers today. Is that what we got? Um, right you know, so we, we, we'll uh, obviously do that, break down. we got a 2.30 game next week in Kinnick. I'm excited to go. Last year I caught COVID, uh, or last time we went over there. So I was watching from uh, Airbnb. Uh, so I'm kind of excited to make this trip, hopefully. Scott's good, so all good? Yeah, I was going to ask that. All right. All good? Thank you, guys.